All right, boys, in the playoffs here, going to be breaking down a little inside the mind, just some some simple gameplay here, going to talk about some things, um, just kind of where the game's at, and uh, just some things we've been learning, thinking about, a lot of good stuff, hopefully helpful in here. Uh, rocking the multiple defensive playbook. If you guys want to get my dollar defense out of that formation or out of that playbook, that is on the Patreon. And then on offense, we're still in the bunch strong. I really like the bunch strong. I think it's the best offense in the game. I think it's the most, uh, I, I call it the, be the, the best standalone formation. Uh, in the game, in my opinion. So we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep rocking it. Uh, and also, I'm gonna basically try to explain um, in this video, kind of just like the adjustments and and how not necessarily how to adjust, but like more so. Um, wish I could have cut that. More so like how to some some keys to defense. Okay, so one of the keys to defense, one of the most, no matter what year of Madden you play. One of the biggest keys uh, to defense is to make everything look identical. If you can make every play look identical, that is one of the biggest keys to defense every single year. It's regardless of year, it's regardless of patch, it's regardless of even whatever formation that you're running, you want everything to look the same. So while that is, all, while that is one of the priorities uh, to defense, and the main reason why you want to make everything look the same is so your opponent cannot identify, you know, how you're adjusting. So in theory, if you think about it, the only time at which they can identify your defense, if you make everything look the same, then basically then from there, the they can't rely on their pre-snap reads. So there's really no point to pre-snap reads if you're, if you're able to make everything look identical. That is a super, super important point and uh, please don't miss that. That is super important. So now if you think about it, what can they actually do? What's going to give them a tell? This guy's running one of the weirdest offenses I think I've ever seen. So they can't have any tells pre-snap. That's one of the reasons why it's so important to make everything look the same. It also allows for your defense to remain what I would call like adaptable, systematic, and adjustable. And the main reason why I say that is because what you're able to do when you are able to make every single defense look identical, you're able to make your pressure just look like your send three. You're able to make your a gap blitz just look look, look just like your DB fire blitz. You're able to to literally run your entire defense uh, defensive system out of one maybe two plays, and that is to me like super super important. Okay, uh, because then what we are able to do is we're able to spend the majority of our time understanding and thinking and talking about how we can make the best adjustments possible for the formation that we're trying to, uh, that we're trying to defend. Super, super important, uh, point. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now this guy's running tight, uh, tight. Um, what is this? Uh, single back tight. So kind of interesting. Don't see this a lot. Fourth down. I'm actually going to do this. I don't know if this will work. This is kind of a really aggressive defense for tight. But if you think about just kind of what he's throwing, he's just mainly throwing seam streaks. And, of course, he runs the ball. Okay. So back to talking about just the defensive systems and things like that. So if you think about it, one of the things I've I've talked about before and one of the things I'm going to continue to talk about here on the channel is the the kind of principle behind defense and, and what you need to be thinking about. So one of the things you need to be thinking about is – making every defense look the same. That's kind of a foundational principle. Another foundational principle is that defense in general, we're trying to restrict the space on the field. We're trying to use, and, and another really underrated uh, point uh, for defense is we're trying to use different leverage points to uh, accomplish different things. So we're trying, this is why baseline press dollar, I think is so good because it provides you with different types of uh, really good leverage points um, to be able to attack things. And you see, eventually they throw you a pick. So because we have a very high leverage defense, we're able to use the leverage points within the formation to be able to force different things. And really, um, you have to, again, and I've talked about this before, but I just think it's such an important point about defense and offense to a degree, but more so defense. You have to understand where you're weak. And if you understand where you're weak, then you can understand how the offense is going to attack you, which should then play into how you can compensate for your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities. If you don't even know where you're weak, 
it's hard to um, you know adapt to where you're weak. So I think that is a super super important uh, point. Now on offense, it's a little bit more easy in my opinion to be systematic because you are just kind of running your stuff and uh, really. I'm kind of, I don't know if I could squeeze that in. Really what happens offensively is you're just trying to attack space or create space. And so because you're trying to attack or create space, then essentially you want to have routes on your field that allow you to be able to attack the most space. I don't know if Perry can drop that over the top. That was an actual, that was actually a beam. Oh man, that was pretty. So you want to have routes that attack the most amount of space. You want to have a formation that gives you the routes to attack the most amount of space possible. That's why I like bunch strong offset. That's why formations like bunch offset uh, are really good is because they can attack uh, a lot of space, right? So all those factors kind of play into how you arrive at dollar is the best defense. Bunch offset or bunch strong offset is the best offense because Dollar gives you the best ability to constrain space. If you think about it, you have, um, if, I mean, even just the layout of the formation, it's a balanced set, symmetrical. The slot corners really do allow you to do a lot of really interesting things because you can, um, because you can do, um, you, you, the slot corners allow you to have better leverage. And again, uh, it's all about creating funnels to certain pockets. So because you cannot constrain every space on the field, you have to be selective about what space you actually are constraining. In this year's game, kind of the popular uh, way to go about things is to try to basically constrain the sidelines, force things into the middle of the field, which is where your user is. However, one of the best ways to constrain the sidelines is to use deep out zone knockout deep end zone there. Yep. Um, to use deep out zone KOs on your outside corners because they will be able to handle, uh, normally be able to handle, uh, corner routes, right? So that's a super, super underrated, uh, point. And I didn't get my adjustments off, so I should get dotted here. Let's see. Nope. Throw a pick. Awesome. Perfect defense. As you see now, again, when you're, when you're playing defense, another important question to ask and this is what's really interesting when you start to get into kind of some of the schematics of Madden. You have to ask the question, okay, what space can they actually can uh, attack, right? So tight doubles. Well, if you're in a compressed set, normally what you're trying to do um, is you're trying to use to run from compression to space. And so the space on the left would be this like outside sideline. Um, the space on the right would be maybe the middle of the field, but also like maybe the, you know, the outside to the right hand side. So if you look at this formation, I mean, if you just peek at this real quick, where's the space at on the field? Well, the space is to the right side of the screen. So I want to attack again. What I want to do as a schem in schematics, I want as an offensive player to be able to attack the most amount of space possible. The reason why is because the hardest place to cover is space um, for the defense. And so the, wh where there is more space, typically there is more openings to be able to attack, okay? This is why um, you hear comp players and some of the best players in the world talk about route spacing and talk about uh, just space in general being a very important component of their offense. And some of them might not even know what I'm talking about when I say offenses, offenses are designed to attack the most space possible but it's just kind of a, a truth and a fact that the best offenses in the world attack the most amount of space in a given play. That is a very important little under undertone is that they, they attack the most amount of space uh, possible within a given, uh, within a given play. That is super, super important. I don't know that this defense right here is very good, but I, I wish this hard flat would do something. I just don't know if it's that good of a zone. He loves to roll out. <sighs> That and see, okay, so that is something about this game that's a little bit different than previous years. So with deep out zone KO, it's definitely the clear cut, like best ability that you have and, and, and can really do a lot for you, right? The one, I think, drawback to the ability is its inability sometimes to KO when it's kind of like, oh, this should obviously be a KO, right? Here, I think he's going to roll left. I'm actually going to get... I got to get over there and contain the rollout. 
What's up with this uh, Pastronaut card? I guess he must get like Escape Artist or something and they just want to roll out with him. I don't understand that. But anyway, so when you're thinking about defense, you have to think about, okay, where can he actually attack with his formation? And where has he? And then another little layer, another little layer to all of this is tendencies. Uh, that is another little little element that you have to think about too is, is the tendencies. So like every single time he basically, what this guy's doing is pretty much every single time he's attacking the wide side of the field, almost, almost unanimously. Like, like right here, he's going to attack the right side of the field. He's going to try to get the rollout. I got the hook curl should be good defense here uh, for what he does. We'll see. So I got to get over here, kind of contain the corner. I'm going to send that hard flat to kind of help the contain. Yep. And you see, he's has to throw the ball away. So Again, where's the space? Where's the space? Where's the space? I, I, I think that is such an important point um, for playing defense. What's interesting about Madden is there is, um, because, of, because it's a video game and it's not real life, there's a little bit more, what I would say, like space manipulation that is a, allowed or that you can, like you can manipulate more space in Madden than you probably can in real life because the, the, the players, all of the AI players, have coding within them that says, okay, these are your rules. And those rules really never change, right? So I do think that's a little bit of a difference uh, from the video game world to real life. And so that's why I think ultimately offense is normally just a little bit more um, powerful in Madden. I literally, ugh. That's frustrating. I just don't know how that kind of stuff is open. Like the yellow zones, they just don't guard that. And it's so annoying. I have a vert hook there and he just looks at it. I really want to figure out, <laughs> I really want to figure out how to stop the run out of this. This is kind of my attempt. If you just crash down, I wonder if this stops the run. Probably doesn't. Crash down. Look at that. KG, even though he broke the tackle. So, uh, so I want to talk about the space stuff a little bit more offensively on this drive and just help you guys kind of see that. So when you're developing route combos, if you think about it in Madden, generally speaking, the main thing you've got to be able to do on offense is you've got to be able to create good route combos. And then you have to execute those, high, those route combos at the highest level you possibly can. On defense, you have to create good coverage adjustments. And at the highest levels, you've got to ex execute those cover adjustments and call them in the right situation. That is super underrated. You have to call them in the right situation because if you don't call them in the right situation or you guess wrong, then those cover adjustments, like what could be great defense against one play is probably bad defense against another play. And so on defense, there's a little bit more of like, I've got to really guess the tendencies. I've got to really think through, okay, here, where's the space? How can they attack the space, right? So... Offensively here, we have a wide side bunch, and I'm not sure what he's running. I think this is 4-6 bear, uh, which I, I don't think I've seen that this year. One of the things I've noticed that he's doing a lot, though, is just a man coverage. So we're going to try to isolate the running back on the left side in man coverage if he runs it. He actually did, and he totally used her at the wheel route way better than I thought he was going to be able to. Another little element of Madden that I've talked about a little bit, especially on offense, is understanding your read progressions. I think that is another really underrated thing um, because if you're not careful, you just do what I did with that wheel route, right? And you just stare the wheel route down and ultimately it's going to lead to um, typically a sack, right? Well, what you want to be able to do is look at one or two routes at a time. Um, can I get a block right there? TJ Watt just made the play of the year. Um, you want to try to basically, and I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos, but if you think about it, every route combo in Madden has ever been good. I mean, shall, uh, slant post, the way he's playing defense, we're actually going to run slant post just to pick up his first down. Like, Every route combination that has ever been relevant in Madden has essentially been a high-low read. It's either a high-low in the middle, a high-low on the side, on one of the sidelines. Um, those are really the two main 
uh, ways in which Hilo reads are created in Madden, right? You typically have a streak corner flat, or you have, you know, a, a slant post or a drag post or a post uh, drag and wheel. Those are, those are examples. Um, I had the slot receiver, dang it. Um, those are examples of what I would call high low reads. You're high lowing um, certain defenders in the defense, right? So with that in mind, it should change kind of how people look at their, um, their passing systems, in my opinion. So like right here, like I have this wheel route, that's more of like a peak route or a clear out route. And I have this flat on the right, same thing, a little bit more of a, a clear out route or just a quick read. But what I'm really looking for on this play is I'm looking at the high low between the drag and the post route. Those are the main reads here. He actually ends up playing man again. So we can just take that corner route, but we can't get our feet down because even though we hit the possession catch button, apparently it didn't register. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Like uh, this play right here is one of the best plays of man right now. A lot of people are running this, right? Well, what do we have? Really, if you think about it, we have a high-low read between the post and the running back off of the rip, but then we also have a high-low read between the post and the drag on the left side. So we kind of have two high-low reads and one, so we're kind of peeking that running back. No, not really there, but we do have that post, so we'll be able to take that. This time, we finally get our feet in bounds, and so you kind of see um, the idea. Now, man coverage, I would say, I think man coverage is a little different than zone, Um Kind of, right? I wouldn't say it's wholesale different. I'd say it's slightly different. I'm going to try kind of a weird route combo here. Just that one. That was what I was trying to do. Just basically create picks and rubs for the drag and be able to get in for seven. So almost all of your passing plays and good route combinations can really be reduced to a high-low read. And then you probably have like uh, what we would call like clear out routes or peak routes. Like you're going to peak a streak, but you're really not like, you're going to look at the streak, but almost never going to be open, right? There's occasion it's going to be open if they bust a coverage or, or whatever. But, but generally speaking, most defenses, if they're putting good defenses on the field, they're going to probably be able to cover the streak. So we're going to get off the streak and we're going to immediately go to our high low between our corner route and our drag route or something or our, or our flat route. So that's kind of how I'm starting to really look at pre-step reads that way and kind of analyze a little bit more like the idea, essentially the idea, like I said, what I just told you that, that it's all high low reads. So trying to identify what's the high low read here. I wish that wasn't open. I wish that was not open. Like yellow zone got sucked down the rolling out in this. The rolling out in Madden in general just really dumbs out some stuff. I think I'm just going to run free safety zone blitz. A little easier to set it up than cover two press for the way I want to play. And we're running the ball down 14. Looks like he's content to take this to half, try to make a second half comeback. My man, Big Ray. I think I get ball here too. I totally get ball at half. Yeah, it should be 28-7 when we come back out. So uh, another thing I wanted to talk a little bit about, especially since we're going back on the office ball, I, I, obviously you guys might know, I'm like a huge fan of Mike Leach, uh, rest in peace, and Hal Mummy, and the air raid offense. And, and air raid offense in general, there is the, the, the true spread air raid guys. They run two by two spread, and it's just really good. Um, the problem is in Madden, it's hard. It's really hard, uh, in my opinion, to run two by two, uh, to run two by two spread every single play, uh, the, just the way the game plays, it's it's just really hard to run two by two spread. Uh, a lot of reasons. One of them being, I totally had both streaks. I don't know why I'm not looking at those streaks. One of them being basically that they just they just struggle to uh, pick up pressure. They um, there's a lot of reasons why the routes um, they don't the routes just don't work as well uh, from from spread from specifically spread, if you were going to run an air raid offense in Madden, in my opinion, the best way to run that would probably be um, to use some kind of trips tight end style of offense. I think that's what would really resemble the air raid the best. But as I've kind of like, I guess, just grown as a Madden player, what I've started to think is, well, the air raid offense is a, is a collection of concepts. Those concepts can be applied to pretty much every formation in the game. And what's even more important is the air raid, um, 
style of play is really more of a philosophy of we're going to simplify our playbook. We're going to maximize execution. We're going to focus on getting a lot of reps. You know, those are some of the big key like principles, in my opinion, of the air raid offense. So it's not just, well, we're going to run, uh, you know, these, you know, we're going to run two by two spread or the air raid has to be a spread offense. It's really more so. It's really more so like in my opinion now, especially if I, what's the best way to apply the air raid to Madden. It really is just a, um, a collection, if you will, of concepts that you can cross apply to different formations. So that's kind of how I've started to see it. But one of the things that I, I did want to talk, touch on here is the air raid is famous for basically being the child of the West Coast offense. But what's really interesting about that to me is the West Coast offense. If you watch a video of West Coast offense formation wise, they are significantly different than the air raid is. If you th if you just look at the formations of a West Coast offense, especially the original West Coast and the original air raid, they're very different. In fact, the only real similar formation would be the air raid when they were running the uh, split, the split back uh, under center. But most air raid teams run two by two spread, three by one spread. Those are kind of the mainstay formations. Whereas West Coast offense, a lot of two back pro set type of offense. And so I'm thinking, well, how are they called the child of, you know, how are they how are they so intricately related? Well, really more so the mainstay philosophy of we're going to throw the ball short uh, to fast guys and get them in space and allow them to run the ball after the catch. That is kind of the main um, uh, philosophy of an air raid and a West Coast system. And again, it goes back to offenses are trying to create space defenses are trying to constrain space right so the the typical air raid offense is trying really if you think about it they're trying to get the ball underneath and with and within that have the receiver be able to to run the ball after catch right so we're, we're throwing the ball underneath a little safer and we're going to try to run the ball after catch what's really interesting about the air raid though is they only had i think 14 different pass plays so you don't need a big playbook. And thanks for watching. You want to get better at Madden, join the Patreon. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and we'll see you tomorrow.